Hi guys, Peria from Into Fly Fishing and welcome to our channel. Today we're going to have a look at how to tie the clink hammer special. It's a fly by the popular Dutch fly tire Hans van Klinken. The materials that we're going to use, firstly the hook is a clink hammer specific hook. This is by a company called Moosh. Moosh Fly Fishing, they're from South Africa and this is the model 8430 in a size 12. You can use any clean camera styled hook. For the thread, I'm using Griffith's Shear 14.0 in white. For the post, orange poly yarn, this is by a company called Flyrite. For the abdomen and thorax, also going to use dubbing by a company called Flyrite. I'm going to tie the fly, the abdomen in this caddis green color variant, and then the thorax in this olive brown. For the ribbing on the abdomen, I'm going to use one strand of crystal flash. And for the hackle, I'll be using this Cree colored cheap um, cock hackle. I'll also be using Loon's Low Tex Wax on the um, abdomen and thorax as a dubbing wax. After whip finishing the fly, I'll be using Loon's Water Based Head Cement. And after finishing the fly off, I'll treat it with some um, floatant. This is by Flyright as well, called Dilly Wax. For the tools that you'll need, a vise, some tying scissors, a bobbin holder for your thread, hackle pliers, and wrapping the hackle, and a whip finishing tool. So without further ado, let's start tying the clink hammer. Great, to start the fly, put the hook into the vise, like so. And secure it in place so that it's seated nice and tightly. Make sure that the eye of the hook is almost level, as this will help you to um, whip finish the fly uh, when the first section is done. And that will help that the thread doesn't slip off the, off the hook when you whip finish. Also, make sure that the hook point and if you use a hook with a barb, that that's exposed as well. Right, attach the thread about a quarter of the shank behind the eye of the hook. And then wrap forward to just behind the eye of the hook and then wrap back. Lay thread foundation all the way back with touching turns to where if you leave the thread hanging freely right there it will hang right on the inside of the bend of the hook right there then wrap your thread all the way forward <coughs> up to about quarter of your thread base behind the eye of the hook. Now take the section of the poly yarn, about four inches is fine. Cut that off. Like so. So this is quite thick poly yarn. On a fly this size, this is fine as you will be tying it in. Um, it will actually shrink or bind in closer. When you tie smaller flies, going down to 14, 16 and 18, you can split the poly on like so, making thinner sections. So tie in the poly on, leaving about an inch on the back. The pinch wrap. One rep, two reps, three reps, then secure with a couple more reps. It's just like that. Right, now it's locked in place. But if you pull too hard on the thread now, the poly arm will still flip over. That's because you haven't locked it in place on the front side. So pull back the poly arm and just build a little dam, thread dam in front of it. 
like so. Now it will stand up straight and form the post for the ankle. To do that, pull the poly on tight to the top and turn your thread around it, like so, in an upward direction. It's important to keep tension on the poly on the whole time, otherwise the process won't work. Go up until you have enough space where you will be creating the base for the hackle. Right, right there. Then move your thread back to the base of the post. Now, with the sharp pair of scissors, I'm just going to get my sharpest pair. Pull the poly arm that's facing rearwards, pull that tight, and at an angle like that, trim it off. That angle will create the taper that you want in the body of the abdomen. Now, wrap all the way back. Making sure that doesn't happen. Trying to cover as much of the poly yarn as possible. Just a little section here that I'm going to cut off. That it's fine if you don't cover all of it, as the dubbing will also help with with that. Right, right that that's a nice taper. Leave your thread at the base of the post again and take one strand of crystal flash and tie it in at the base of the post. Sorry, this post is a little bit long, it's giving me problems. I just want to cut it shorter. Okay. And wrap that um, crystal flash back with your thread all the way to where the thread base starts, right there. Now I'll take some dubbing wax and wax the thread. Doesn't have to be thick coating, just a little bit. Now with this caddis green poly dubbing, remove a little bit, it doesn't have to be too much, you can always add some later. Just going to pull like that. And form a nice, very slender dubbing needle, like so. Once you've trapped first couple of fibers, pull the dubbing noodle, twist it, twist it. This will create a nice slender look, like that. Keep going forward, you'll see that I have too little. So what we'll do is a little bit more dubbing wax so <clears throat> you'll see that I apply a little bit at a time so I'll be a little add a little bit more And make sure that you cover all the orange poly yarn, like so. There you have a nice tapered body. And then in the, we wrap the um, 
dabbing in that direction. Now in the opposite direction, we wrap the ribbing, creating evenly spaced segments, pulling the dubbing tight. On small flies, I don't really add ribbing, but on slightly larger flies, I like adding ribbing, especially in, um, in water that's a little bit murkier or dirtier. A little bit of flash works well. Right, so you, we entered the abdomen right behind the post. It's fine if you leave a little gap there, we can start the thorax just behind the post as well. But at this stage, it's time to prepare the hackle for the, for the fly. So we'll look at selecting uh, the correctly sized hackle for the fly. You can use a hackle gauge, um, that will help you, certainly help you, but after a certain time you'll get used to or more experience in selecting hackles, especially you can vary the hackle sizes on different on different flies. I mean, on a size 12, there's not you can use a couple of different sizes of hackle. Let me put it that way. It's not fixed. Um, you can play around with hackle depending on how high you want the fly to arrive in the water. This might be a little bit too big. Let me just select a smaller one. Like so. Right. That's perfect. So um, after you selected a packle, just pull back all the fibers, stroke back all the fibers that they are stand perpendicular to the stem. Like so. And then I remove all the fibers that are soft, the softer fibers at the stem. Now stroke back all the fibers at the tip. Like so flip the fly so that the the, uh, the um, feather has a shinier side on the one side and a duller side on the, on the other, opposite side. So the shiny side, we're tying so that it faces the post. So with the hackle pointing downwards, the tip, hold it in place so that the fibers start where the thread wraps on the post ended. So we hold it there. One or two reps at the base just to secure it in place like so and then start wrapping upwards making sure trying not to trap any fibers wrap upwards securing this hackle feather to the post itself. Like so. Just make a couple more wraps. Like so. Then cut off the excess at the base of the post. That excess tip that you tied in. And that's the hackle tied in place. We'll leave that for now and run the thread back down just behind the post, apply some wax to the thread like so and now take some of the darker dubbing for the thorax like so and for the dubbing noodle Thorax can be slightly thicker than the one that you created for the abdomen. Once again, just pull it tight after every couple of reps. 
like so. Pull the feather back <clears throat> and just create a thorax with a with a dubby. Now pull back any forward facing fibers and just create a small head for the fly. And whip finish fly with two whip finishes, pulling tight after each, securing the knot, like that. Now you can add a drop of head cement to the head, securing that knot that you just made. Just make sure that you don't um, get any instrument trapped in the eye of the hook. That will um, just cause some frustration later. So now it's time to flip the fly um, so that the hackle and the post is in the horizontal plane. So you remove the fly from the vise, just turn it on its side, and it's time to reattach the thread to the base of the post. Just lock it in place with a couple of wraps. Once it's locked in place, cut or break off the thread. Like so. Uh, now just take your hackle pliers, attach that to your hackle, and let's turn the hackle around the post in a downwards direction and pulling tight on the post every now and then just to make sure that the hackle doesn't slip. Pull back or up rather any fibers that you see are facing down. Just like that. I'm just going to take a point of my scissors. There are some fibers that are trapped. I just want to release. You can also use a bodkin for this, but I'm using my scissors. And then we want to secure this uh, hackle. So, this is where the hackle ply comes in very handy, as you just leave it hanging there. And now you stroke back all the fibers that are facing down, like so, and you run your thread around them to pick them up so that you don't trap them, like so, and then make one or two wraps around the hackle itself to secure it in place like so off to happy that it's secure very carefully cut off the stem of the hackle feather. Now the hackle is locked in place. Before we whip finish, pull down all the fibers, pull the stem, uh, the um, poly on stem tight and make one cut to cut off the post, the excess post material. Pull up all the fibers again and now whip finish. running the th thread around the fibers, making sure that we don't trap any of them, like so. Pull the knot tight and cut off the thread. Now I can remove the fly from the ice again and just pop it in. level and just 
make sure that you didn't trap any fibers if you did that's fine fish really don't care um, just trim them a little bit there's one trap like that and there you are that's how you tie a clink hammer and then before you fish um, the fly or any dry fly for that matter just take some of your favorite floatant I'm going to apply some directly to the post on larger clink cameras the post actually keeps the fly um, afloat then I just rub all that dilly wax through the hackle and the post and there you are uh, that's how you tie a clink hammer I hope that you guys enjoyed this step-by-step -step tutorial and um, I hope to see you guys during our next fly tying tutorial. Cheers from Into Fly Fishing.